Welcome to Module 6, Washington Health Plan Finder System Functionality. Today we will review the application process in Health Plan Finder, including the topics creating an account, completing the application, and selecting a managed care plan. We will start by giving an overview of the Washington Health Plan Finder application system. Washington Health Plan Finder. Washington Health Plan Finder is an easily accessible online marketplace for Washington State residents to compare and enroll in health insurance plans. This one-stop shop enables applicants to apply for free or low-cost health care coverage, including Apple Health Medicaid, with real-time coverage results available in most instances, and receive personal customer support when applying, finding, comparing, and enrolling in a health plan that meets their needs. Apple Health Application Process Apple Health applicants are not required to create an account in Washington Health Plan Finder. They can proceed with the application process as a guest. However, an account enables clients to easily report changes, upload documents, sign up for electronic communications, and more. Homepage. On the homepage, users can sign in and create an account, apply for coverage, contact customer support, and get language assistance. Sign-in page. Users are given three attempts to correctly enter their username and password before their account is locked. Use the Forgot Password link before the account is locked to reset the password. Additional authorization. An authorization code will be sent to your email account. Enter the email authorization code and select Next. This code is character sensitive, so make sure there are no extra characters if using the copy-paste function. Volunteer Sisters and Washington Health Plan Finder. In this section, we will go over the Volunteer Assister dashboard, including finding a client and partnering with clients for continued assistance. Enhanced Access Health Plan Finder has special access features depending on the user's role. For Volunteer Assisters to have enhanced access to be able to assist clients with their application, the Assister must first complete the seven-module community-based training, pass the assessment, and a background check. Once enhanced access is granted, a username and temporary password is emailed. Change the temporary password at the initial login. Volunteer Assister Dashboard. After successful sign-in, you will be directed to the Volunteer Assister Dashboard with the main tabs Account Home and My Clients. On the right side are some quick links for navigating the dashboard including the options to find new client account and start new application. Find new client's account. To prevent system errors or the creation of duplicate applications, always search for a pre-existing application before starting a new application. Search by first name, last name, and date of birth. If using immigration documentation to verify date of birth, be aware of the month, date, and year format when searching. Client search results. When searching, if there are multiple search results, select the option that fits. If there are no results or no results that fit, select the back button to create a new application. Partnering with the client. The client must agree to the volunteer sister as their navigator to assist with the application. For ongoing assistance, the volunteer assister can partner with a client, but this is not required. Partnering with clients. Once the client has been located or an application has been started, the volunteer assister can partner with the application for 30 days. Partnering with an application allows the volunteer assister to report changes on the application, assist with uploading documents to the client's document center, complete renewals, and receive copies of notifications. Partnering with the client. 
Once the volunteer assister has partnered with a client, they will be listed under the My Clients tab for quick access. Upon a client's request, a volunteer assister can repartner with an application every 30 days to remain the client's navigator. Account creation. In this section, we will go over how to create an account and sign up for paperless notifications. Creating an account. Anytime a new application is created, Health Plan Finder will prompt for an account to be created. An account is not required to apply for Apple Health, but one can be created at any time. To proceed without creating an account, select the Skip Account Creation button. Creating an account allows individuals the added benefits to easily report changes, submit documents, go paperless, and a secure location to access account correspondences. Creating an account. To create an account, the client must have an email address, create a username and password, and agree to the terms and conditions. Application process. In this section, we will review each page of the application and its required information. About You. The About You page is where the primary applicant's basic information will be entered. Enter the required information to include name, date of birth, sex assigned at birth, and who all is applying for coverage. Whether the client is applying only for themselves, themselves and others, or for other household members. About you. To apply for Apple Health coverage or if help is needed with paying premiums, leave this question marked yes to apply for Apple Health Medicaid. Under the demographics section, answer the required questions and agree to the privacy policy before selecting next. Entering contact info. Enter the household's contact information on this page. Indicate the client's residential and mailing address. If the client states they are homeless, select the box indicating they do not have a home address. A mailing address is still required so clients can receive Apple Health eligibility letters and updates. If they do not have a mailing address, the system will prompt with the suggestion to use USPS General Delivery Services. Enter the city, state, and zip for the USPS location they would like to receive their mail at. Address Confidentiality Program. For clients enrolled in the Address Confidentiality Program, ACP, enter PO Box 257 on address line 1. Enter Olympia, Washington 98507 for the city, state, and zip code. Once entered, a pop-up box will appear asking for the client's personal mailbox number, or PMB. Enter their PMB number in this pop-up box. Do not enter the PMB number anywhere else. Enter contact info. Enter the telephone contact information, language preferences, and indicate whether blind or low vision assistance is needed. Adding an AREP. Select this box if the client wants to add an authorized representative to their account. The authorized representative is a person 18 or older who is not an employee of HCA, who has sufficient knowledge of the household circumstances, and can act on behalf of the household for all matters related to the application and account. Enter the AREP's first and last name and mailing address. If the client wants, duplicate notifications can be sent to their AREP. Confirming Identity Process on occasion, the Health Plan Finder application may require additional questions to be answered to confirm the applicant's identity. If the answers are unknown, select the answer none of the above or does not apply to proceed. Set the tax status. Clients will be prompted to report their tax filing status for the current year, as well as their expected tax filing status for the following years. Adding household members. To add household members, select the Add Member button. 
a pop-up box will appear to enter the household member's information, which is shown in detail in the next slide. Adding household members. In the pop-up box, enter the household member's required personal and demographic information, including first and last name, date of birth, sex assigned at birth, and whether they are American Indian or Alaska Native. Then indicate the household member's relationship to the primary applicant, whether they are applying for coverage, and their tax filing status for the current year. Selecting the options that best applies, indicate the household member's future tax filing status and current living situation. Depending on how these questions are answered, additional data fields may show. Select Save to add more household members or to continue with the application. Set Household Relationships After adding all the household members, set each person's relationship status to the other listed household members. This also determines the medical assistance unit size for eligibility. Tribal Membership if any household members are American Indian or Alaska Native, this is where the tribal membership information is entered. Enter the name of the tribal membership for each household member. If the exact tribal name is unknown, use a search function to narrow down the results. Selecting Show All provides over 500 results. About your household. Additional questions about the household members that are seeking coverage are asked on this page. Indicate household member's citizenship or immigration status, incarceration status, Washington residency, and pregnancy status for each household member that is requesting Apple Health coverage. It is important to note that the request for pregnancy status is for the last 12 months and not just whether the client is currently pregnant. Immigration information. Only those clients seeking coverage that are not a U.S. citizen or national will need to enter the information from their immigration documents. The information requested from the immigration documents varies by the document type. However, the date of entry to the U.S. is always required. The required information for each document type will be shown in detail over the next few slides. Immigration document types. Select the immigrant document type being used for verification. Remember, this information is only requested for those household members that are seeking coverage. Permanent resident card. If using a permanent resident card, enter the A number and receipt number listed on the card. I-571 Refugee Travel Document. If using this document, enter the A number. I-776 Employment Authorization Card. If using an employment authorization card, enter the A number, document expiration date, and the receipt number. Machine Readable Visa. If using a machine-readable immigrant visa, enter the document expiration date. The application will ask if the person has a foreign passport. If they do, enter the passport number, country of issuance, and passport expiration date. Other document types. For the document types, temp I-551 stamp, the I-94 arrival departure record, and other, the information from the foreign passport is needed to verify the status. Enter the passport number, the country that issued the passport, and the document's expiration date. Foreign passport. If the client only has a foreign passport, indicate they do not have an immigrant document. This then provides the option to enter information from the passport, which is the passport number, country of issuance, and the passport expiration date. Screening for other services. If a household member seeking coverage needs other services, indicate yes for each service needed. Other services include long-term care services, in-home caregiver, services through the Developmental Disabilities Administration, hospice care, health coverage, 
for those who are unable to work due to a condition, as well as requesting assistance for any unpaid medical expenses accrued in the last three months, known as retroactive coverage. Requesting other services. For those that need any of these services, select yes to the requested service. A drop-down box will provide the option to select who needs the service. Other drop-down options may appear based on the services requested. The referral for other services is sent to DSHS, Department of Social and Health Services. A letter will be sent to the client asking for additional information to verify the individual's eligibility for these services. Requesting AEM coverage. AEM coverage, or Alien Emergency Medical Coverage, is for those requesting Apple Health coverage that otherwise do not meet the citizenship or immigration requirements. This coverage type is requested if coverage is needed for emergency hospitalization, cancer treatment, kidney dialysis, or for COVID-19 testing and treatment. Select whether this coverage type is needed for the persons listed. Requesting retroactive coverage. If a household member needs help to pay for unpaid medical expenses incurred within the last three months, select yes to the unpaid medical expenses question and indicate for whom the expense is for. It is important to note that retroactive coverage is not automatically approved. A request for information to verify eligibility for retroactive coverage will be sent. Adding household income. Report household member's income by selecting yes to each applicable income type, then indicate who receives the income. Select next to enter the gross monthly amounts for each income type indicated. The information requested from the different income types will be discussed in detail over the next few slides. Income from a job. For those with income from a job, enter the earning member's gross monthly income, the employer's information, and whether the employer offers health insurance coverage. Income calculators. If the gross monthly income is unknown, use the included income calculator to aid in determining the monthly amount. These calculators are available to assist in calculating the monthly income for three different income types, income from a job, self-employment income, and rental income. Each calculator type provides different field options that are used to calculate the gross amounts. Self-employment income. For those with self-employment income, indicate the type of company, whether it is a sole proprietor or partnership, or corporation, enter the company name, the net business income, and frequency the income is earned. For self-employment, the net business income can be reported as a positive or negative number to indicate a business profit or loss. Rental income. Rental income is income earned from renting out personal property. If anyone in the household receives this type of income, add the property name, the net amount, and how often the rental income is received. Income from Social Security. Social Security Disability Income, SSDI, survivor and widower benefits are not countable income for tax purposes, but are one of the exceptions of countable income from MAGI-based Apple Health. If any household members receive this type of income, enter the gross amount under the income option for Social Security. Other income. For those in the household who earn income from less common options, this may be listed under other income. Select the income type that fits and enter the income amount and frequency. Income of a tax dependent. If a minor in the household is receiving income, the system will ask whether that minor is required to file a tax return before prompting to enter the income information. This determines whether the minor's income will count towards the total household income. Adding deductions. If there are any household members with IRS allowable deductions, select yes and indicate who the deductions belong to. Select next to enter the deduction types and amounts. 
entering deduction details. Select the deduction type, enter the amount of the deduction and frequency received. To include multiple deduction types, select Add Deduction and enter the required information for each deduction type. When finished entering all deductions, select Next to proceed with the application. Application Review The last page of the application is the final review before e-signing and submitting. If the information reviewed needs to be corrected, selecting Edit will allow you to make the changes necessary. Select Next to proceed to the signature page. Submit your application. In order to sign and submit the application, first indicate whether the primary applicant would like to register to vote. Then certify the electronic signing of the application, perjury statement, and reading of the rights and responsibilities. The signature requires the first and last name to be filled out in the applicable boxes, then select Submit My Application for an Eligibility Determination. Eligibility Results This section will go over how the system verifies eligibility and an overview of the Eligibility Results screen. Eligibility Results Washington Health Plan Finder sends the application data to the eligibility services to determine each household member's eligibility for free and low-cost health insurance programs. In most instances, eligibility services instantly returns each client's eligibility results using the information in the application. This information is either verified or unable to be verified by the federal hub, which checks for social security number verification, citizenship status, and incarceration status. If information is unable to be verified, Washington Health Plan Finder will approve Apple Health with the request for verification needed or will place the member in a pending status. For those members placed in a pending status, a letter requesting verification to determine eligibility will be sent out by the agency. Eligibility Results the eligibility outcomes for each member requesting coverage is found on this eligibility results page. To review the eligibility results for each person, select their name on the left to view their summary of eligibility. Managed Care Plan Selection This section will go over what a managed care plan is and how to select one. About Managed Care Apple Health coordinates, delivers, and pays for a client's coverage, providing whole person care under a single health plan known as a managed care plan. For clients that are exempt or not eligible for managed care enrollment, Apple Health coverage is offered fee for service, FFS, which is when Apple Health pays the provider directly. Clients enrolled in a managed care plan must see providers within the plan's provider network unless prior authorization has been approved or to receive urgent or emergent care. Managed care plan options may vary depending on the county of residence. Selecting a managed care plan. After the initial eligibility results page, clients may select shop plans to enroll in a managed care plan. Clients can change their plan selection at any time under the account home tab on the client dashboard. Shop for Managed Care. The system will determine whether a client can enroll in a managed care plan and which plans are available. Only one managed care plan can be selected for each application. To return to the client dashboard, select Skip Plan Selection. If no plan is chosen, one will be auto chosen. Client Dashboard Key Features. In this section, we will go over the account home features of the client's dashboard, including the message center, where to upload documents, and where to make changes to the profile. Account Home Overview The client dashboard is where one can manage account settings, coverage options, and view important messages. The Account Home tab gives a summary of the household as well as access to account tabs and application quick links located on the left-hand side. 
access to view the Message Center tab is only available within the Account Home tab. The Payments tab is only used to view the Qualified Health Plan subscriber number. Message Center. The Message Center is where clients can view an electronic version of letters and requests for information that were sent to the household. My Household. The My Household tab is a shortcut to view and update the household address or other personal household member information. There are also links to report a change, view the household's application, and member coverage history. Document Center. Uploading documents to Health Plan Finder is just one of the many ways clients can submit proof of requested information. The Document Center is where documents can be uploaded for verification purposes. My Profile. Select the My Profile tab to view and update account information, notification preferences, and client language preferences. Renewing Coverage and Reporting Changes. This section will go over how to renew coverage and report changes to the household. Renewing Coverage. When there is a member of the household that is due for renewal, the option to update application and renew coverage will show under the client's account home dashboard. This will take you to the application review page where changes can be made and then e-signed and submitted for a renewal determination. Reporting changes. However, if there are changes that need to be reported before renewal is due, select the report a change option located on the account home dashboard under the application quick link. Reporting changes. After selecting report a change, choose yes for the change option and that fits. Then next will take you to the page in the application where the change is reported. Proceed through the rest of the application to sign and submit the changes. Adding Household Member Indicating you are adding someone to the household will jump ahead to the Add Household Member section of the application. Add the new member's personal and demographic information. When adding new household members to an active application, the system will ask the reason for addition. Adding a newborn is the same process as adding any other household member, but with birth being the reason for addition. Reporting a change in pregnancy. Common instances of changes reported are reporting a pregnancy and adding a new household member. To report that a household member is pregnant or has been pregnant in the last 12 months, select yes to the pregnancy question under the answering questions about your household section of the application. Indicate who is or was pregnant, their due date, and expected number of babies. Reporting the end of pregnancy. In instances where you are adding a newborn or otherwise reporting the end of a pregnancy, make sure to update the pregnancy question and provide the end date. This change is important to assure 12 months of continuous coverage of after pregnancy coverage known as APC. Finalizing reported changes. An e-signature is required to finalize all changes. Once completed with changes, proceed through the application to the e-signature page to sign and submit the reported changes. Next slide will go over the available resources. Resources. For additional resources and materials regarding Apple Health programs, please visit the Health Care Authority's training and education webpage listed on this slide. For community partners, the Health Care Authority has made available a team of eligibility policy representatives to provide assistance for questions regarding eligibility and assistance with Washington Health Plan Finder applications. These representatives serve specific counties. For more information about the Washington Volunteer Assister Program, contact us at HCA Volunteer Assister at hca.wa.gov. Congratulations! You have completed Module 6 of the Healthcare Authority's Community Based Training. Please continue on to the last module of the seven module Healthcare Authority's Community Based Training.